Right, hey everyone, we are back in business. So, look what's arrived. So, this is old crap that we did design around. This is what we're going with now. So, this is a three phase induction motor, eight pole, um, so that makes it 750 RPM, which we can do. And it's a beast, the size of it, monster. It's 2.2 kilowatt. It is an, what's called an IE3, where does it say it? IE3, which means it's 82% efficient at 75% and 81.9% uh, uh, at 100%. Basically, it's 82% efficient, which means we can run this bad boy at 1,800 watts, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, and it will do it because it's a proper, proper thing, proper motor. So it is a motor, it's not a generator, it's an induction motor. But uh, when we spin it at a certain speed, add capacitors, it becomes a generator. But you're probably looking at that and thinking, hmm, that's big. And it is in comparison to the two. You see the problem. So the mountings on the feet are all different, everything's different, and it doesn't fit inside of the uh, guard. So I've started modifying the guard. Hang on. Sorry, it's early evening now and the light comes through the windows and it's quite challenging. But I've started to modify the guard. We need to add this, uh, this swelling on the back for the motor to sit in. We need 100 millimeters extra space in there. Started doing that. The only issue is now, after this is added on, we only have 20 millimeters, well, just about an inch it is. We've got about an inch of clearance before we hit the wheel, which is okay, but we're sort of pushing the limits a bit. So it does fit, but it's very tight. So yeah, gonna get this fabricated and then we'll be back there to fit it all. The uh, knock-on effect so far of that uh, cheap alternator, Chinese lying about it, has been uh, really significant. I've had to spend a lot of money on that new motor, got to modify this, then got to drive it to the powder coaters, get it powder coated, then got to go and pick it up again. I've then got to go and get everything back from the powder coaters and go back up there. My friend John has been backwards and forwards to the, to the site because he doesn't live too far from there. And um, it's for doing measurements and stuff for me. And yeah, it's just been a big upheaval, all for someone, all for the sake of them lying about it. Well annoying. All right, hey everyone, we're back in uh, John's lovely workshop, his hydroelectric workshop. I've come here because he's set up for testing and setting up induction motors as generators so we've got this is the motor that's going on the wheel and it's going to act as a generator even though it's a motor and this is just an induction motor that's driving it it's driven via belts we're using this one to drive this one and then we're adding in capacitors because i try not to bore you too much with it but this is a motor and it doesn't have any magnets in it the only way it can work is by using electricity to um, energize electromagnets. And that's how it works as a motor. But if we want it to act as a generator, we need to put in capacitors because if we just spin it, it won't actually have any power to excite the, ma the electromagnets in it. So we have to put capacitors in to feed a bit of power back to the um, motor, to the core of it, to the electromagnets, so they excite, so it can act as a generator. And the size of those capacitors is quite important so that it acts right and runs at the right speed. So that's what we're doing with it. We're just going to run it up now and show you. So we run that up. And we've got the same thing going on here, grid tie inverter. And then once that latches in, that's going to load it exactly the same way we're doing with our water wheel. We'll load that up and we can read the output over here a bit easier on that. 
when it clicks in it will start reading some output there and we can see how it acts at certain speeds. So the speed we're looking for is 750 on the motor. So we're a little bit low so John can bring it up a little bit. So where are we at John? 728? 728. Okay, so we're getting up close. Seven, between 730 and 750 is our uh, is our speed. So at that speed we are doing 1671 watts. So we're doing quite well. We're getting up to where 1800 is our max. So John's bringing speed up a little bit. What speed we got there John? There we go, we're getting pretty close now, 726. So we could go a little bit more. A little bit more. But at that speed, we're getting 1700 watts. So if John brings it up a little bit more and we go up to 1800. So 1776 we are there. Well, it's 1730. That's about the speed we want to spin it, so it's all working just right. I'll do the vault. If you want. Yeah, let's do, see what the vault output is. Okay. And we are at that 1700 watts. Now it will go a bit harder than that. It'll go up to 1800, but we're really pushing everything to the limit there. And stuff's going to start getting hot. So you see the trouble is this is a three kilowatt motor and it's only 80% efficient. And this is a 2.2 kilowatt. So by, by the time we go through all the different losses involved, the output, we're not going to be able to get too much more than that out of this. Um, yeah, we're approaching the max. It's tripped out. We maxed it out. <laughs> so John's been. Uh, we're driving that through a VFD over here, yeah, and this uh, is giving us a fault because we're really pushing it too hard at that point. I say it's a three kilowatt motor, but it's not 100% efficient. So the output, the actual drive output of it, is less than that. And then it's got to go through this, which is 2.2 kilowatt. But as a generator, it's the we lose the efficiency again. So after we deduct all those losses, it's actually maxing this out. But at the speed we're going to turn it at on the wheel, we're getting the output we want. So that's the right capacitance. And the capacitance we've gone with for this is 80 microfarads. So that's set up and working. Hey everyone, we are back. You'll have to excuse the noise. It's uh very very wet and uh, we're back at the wheel and check this out she fits it uh, it took a lot of working out that base plate I know I didn't film it I was pretty stressed about it because it clashes with the frame so I've had to make this plate to raise everything up so I could shift everything over a bit uh, but it looks like it's gonna work but everything's really tight now as far as clearances go and so we're getting pretty close to the wheel, but we're okay, and it looks like it's going to work, and that is going to do the job. So I'm just about to bolt this down and get the belt on, and uh, I've got to get all those capacitors and everything wired in. But yeah, looking good. Right, we're getting somewhere. So I've replaced this uh, steel rod that got bent when it talked over, and we've got the new motor fitted. The belt's aligned and tracking. Um, the gland on this is different, so I've had to uh, leave that dangling. I'm going to have to get an adapter for that. That's not a big deal. The uh, next job to do is to check that the uh, cover fits on. And as you can see, it's quite tight. It's okay. So, cover. She's tight. 
but we're good. Right, that is a real relief. As you can see, I didn't have a lot of room left to play with. Obviously, I had to design around what was already here after I got let down by that Chinese alternator. But we've got clearance and it's okay, it clears. Right, it's time to get the uh, capacitors wired in to get away from this noise. This is really, really loud. Um, so yeah, Richard yesterday uh, managed to put a nice little uh, deck here, nice safe space to stand. So we've got this area here. He's also put in this emergency shut off flap, which we'll uh, talk about that later. And uh, our little flow control flap, which is done a bit better with like galvanized pipe and stuff. So I've got the wiring done, I'll go and show you it. So run through some changes. In the porch here, we now have bigger resistance heater. And that now is away from all the other stuff. I didn't like it as close to the other stuff. It'll only put out 1.5 kilowatts and although it's close to this, this is all fireproof and it's not gonna burn anything there. It's 1.5 kilowatts is not a lot of energy when it's spaced away from something. Um, so my wiring is done. So I've done that, added some bits. So we've got capacitors added that control the motor. That's what we are testing at John's yesterday or the day before. And I've also added this little situation down here which is very cool i shall show you what that is so that is a latching switch and indicator light so if we get a grid failure which i'll imitate now right grids failed it does the relay which now will start to heat up this heater so we'll just take a temperature now because it will slowly heat up so it's 18 19 See, so that is now dumping energy into that heater. I'll show you that in a minute, it will heat up a bit. It's only on low flow at the minute. We have no operation on there and everything is off and the wheel is just directly coupled to the heating element. Now, if we turn the grid back on, the uh, controller will come back on. Oh no, it won't, we, oh yeah. We're getting just enough power to turn the controller on. Oh no, not quite. There's not quite enough power to turn that on. But if you, what you'll notice is, is that hasn't come back on. And now the reason that hasn't come back on is because if it did, it would overspeed the wheel and make too much voltage and cook the controller. So in this situation now, you go outside, you turn the flow down a little bit, you come back in here and then you reinstate this and it latches. Now that's latched on. Now the power is now diverted back into this controller and now this will start up and latch to the grid and then work. So it's a system that has to be reinstated manually so it doesn't sit over speeding. And during the time that it uh, uh, would have been over speeding, it puts it, the power all into the uh, heater over there. So that's working excellently now. So uh, that will be the water wheel latched now. So let's uh, add a bit of flow. I don't want to go too mad initially. This is the first test. Maybe actually, yeah, let's, uh, let's just have it like that. Yeah, we'll start with that. The uh, trough and the corner is looking much nicer. Works much better now with the curves. Right. So that is currently doing 860 watts. So we'll leave it ticking along at that at the moment for a bit. Just check everything's working right. But that's pretty good, isn't it? But that's like half flow. I'm well pleased with that. All right, I'll leave that ticking along for a minute. Yeah, here's something interesting for you. A lot of people were saying, read some comments there, like, oh, what's the point of all this work for, for a measly 1.5 kilowatt? It's just like, just get solar. Well, this is half flow rate, well, about that, on the hydro, which will run 24-7, 365 days a year, all right? This house has a four kilowatt solar system on it. This is it here. 
Now this is a four kilowatt solar system and it is, hang on, let me tell you what time it is. It is, hang on, it is 10.49 and the four kilowatts of panels are doing 148 watts and they'll do that for about four hours today. So we got 150 watts over here for about four hours of the day and we got 860 watts here, or 800 odd, 850. That's at half flow, we're gonna get more than that yet. And that will do that 24 seven, 365 days a year. And that is what makes the difference. Yeah, that's, uh, that's not having a go at solar systems. You know, I love solar. We rely on solar in many ways, but uh, solar and hydro are just not comparable. They're not comparable in the slightest. Let's give this a bit more power. Whoops, see Daisy, didn't mean to do that. There we go, let's go full, shall we? Why not? There we go, full power. Right, we are at full flow rate, or close to. We still got splashing, but as a percentage of the flow rate, I would say that it's very minimal, 5% maybe quite good you see the speed is much closer to what we wanted you know that's the right speed now yeah I'm pleased with that as a speed if you have a look the buckets are about two-thirds full but obviously we're getting considerable splashing because they're approaching their complete fill level so it's just still settling in but we are up to 3 1350 Pretty good. So now we're at thirteen hundred. Well, thirteen seventy. I'm hoping for fifteen hundred. Fifteen hundred is the is the minimum target. From that, it's looking like it's doable, which is a big relief. And it's going to do that twenty four seven. That's the main thing. So I've just come up the top here where the uh, temporary dam was, and you can see there's a lot of uh, lost water here. So uh, I might just slow this uh, down a little bit with a couple of rocks, and that should give us a bit more flow. Actually, I might see if I can jam one of these bits of plywood in there. That might do it. If that could jam in there, somewhere. Put a bit of a rock there. There we go. It's only temporary, just for testing. There we go. Give us a bit more water. Another thing people kept going on about in the comments, which uh, I don't know if it's my fault for not explaining it. They kept saying you shouldn't dam up a river, you'll destroy the river. It's, it's uh, really bad for the environment. Well, this was dug. This is a man-made leak. And it was dug hundreds of years ago. And um, it's, like I say, it's been here 100 years. It becomes a little refuge for fish out of the main river because the main river's down there, and it's massive. It's a proper massive, you know, river. Tens of thousands of times the flow of this. And so, uh, and so this has no environmental impact. It just doesn't, and the water goes back in the main river anyway. So anything that's blocked by the dam from coming up into here can just go around in the main river. There, there is no environmental impact. Yeah, this here powers the wheel. And that over there is the main river. It's literally 50 times wider, five times as deep. It's huge. Okay, so uh, as you can see, we're at absolute maximum flow rate there. Uh, quite a lot of splashing at that point. Uh, buckets are basically overfilling. Um, so that, that is really the, the maximum that we can run that at. Um, so, Go and look at the power output. If it's 1500 watts, then we're good. Right, so at that max flow rate, we are up at 1580, 1530, 1510, 1560, 1590. So guaranteed the customer 1500 minimum and we've got it. And that does seem to be the maximum we're gonna get. 
I might still mess around with slight efficiencies. Maybe we can see 1600. Oh, there we did see 1600. Maybe we can see a consistent 1600. That'd be nice. But we've reached the target. So now it's just reliability we need to test for now. 1590. Oh man, that's so much power. And it will do that all the time. 1610. Well, anyway, I am well pleased with that. A lot of work's gone into that. Really a lot of work. So I'm going to actually mess around with the uh, capacitors in here and uh, change them for slightly smaller capacitance, see if we get any difference, but I think they're right, to be honest. And then I'm going to do a few more tests with the uh, shutdown system. Yeah, well pleased with that. That is a major success. Major success. So uh, this is quite interesting. So that now is uh, quite a bit less flow rate, as you can see. We've got, uh, I don't know, maybe a couple of percent splashing. It's really not very much. If you have a look at the bucket, they're really quite full. So, you know, well, there's a bit of space left in them, but the splashing is massively reduced, and the whole thing looks very much less chaotic and looks like a much lower flow rate. But that's 1200 watts that's running at now. So if you have a look, that was, uh, that's what that flow rate currently is doing. So it seems like it's, uh, it gets quite a bit more inefficient in terms of uh, flow rate as it gets up to those uh, buckets being full because it can't fill them evenly enough and it starts to splash out. So, you know, it can do 15, 1600, but it sits more happily at sort of 1200, uses much less water. When you go up further past that, it takes quite a bit more water per watt if that makes sense because the efficiency starts to drop off but that's good 1500 1600 is the peak and it will tick along you know at that quite happily but it just uses more water so yeah good we've got it working right i'm going to leave it ticking over at this overnight because it's really really quite steady at that and i'm going to carry on the uh, peak testing tomorrow to make sure there's no faults. I thought I'd just come in here quickly and just show my original survey, which I'm uh, quite proud of. And I've taken out a few of the personal details, but if you have a look at the uh, outputs, the expected outputs or estimated outputs, you can see that the peak output there, I was only out by, well, about what, 80 watts or so, something like that. Uh, but the main thing that I'm most proud of and, and shows that all of this was completely expected in the survey, was I said in the survey, when I first did it, that 1700 watts would be the absolute peak and at that point the water would start glancing off of the wheel. Um, and so yeah, it looks really good. Um, it's basically doing exactly as I told the customer it would, so I'm really happy with that. So yeah, what I just showed you was uh, 1150 watts, whoa, nearly fell in, 1150 watts, and uh, to get 1600 we need all of that there, because that's what we were putting for it when we were having 1600 or 1550, 1600. It was all that as well on top of it. So it takes a lot more water to get to that, but it's, uh, it really, really likes going sort of 1200. And uh, it will still happily tick along at 1600, but it just takes so much less water, which is good because this is more like what's gonna be a really even consistent uh, flow rate, because we're in the middle of winter at the moment, you know? And so at that flow rate, we've got not a lot of splashing, 1200 watts and look at that that's a perfect lovely slow speed it's exactly what we wanted well pleased with that yeah so you get 1600 we have to put all that in it as well yeah really good Good example of why we love hydro. It is 355, 353. The solar system is doing zero watts. Can you see that? Zero. And the hydro is just on low, ticking over 700 watts. What have we been 
what we've generated so far today. Bear in mind I've been having it on and off and it hasn't been on all day. What are we at today? 6.4 kilowatt hours so far today and that's with me messing about with it and only been on since the morning. What did the solar do today? Uh, where is it? It is three. Three kilowatt hours. So yeah, that's the, that's the, uh, the beauty of the old hydro systems. Solar is brilliant, but it's just not nothing in, in comparison. Yeah, it's going to do that all night, all the time, forever. And uh, yeah, solar is just on and off. You know, that's why you can't compare the two. They're both great, but you can't compare them. Um, so yeah, I'm going to run that at low. Run that at that 1150, 1200 overnight. Hopefully, it's nice and reliable. Right here everyone, it's the next day and uh, Will's been running all night, been producing well. Interestingly the flow in the river must have dropped because we're now using all the water. You can see there's really nothing coming down here now. Um, and so we're using all the water and that's 1200 watts. So the river's dropped a bit overnight because as you can see it's uh, quite a clear day, didn't rain yesterday. So uh, yeah, so we're running at full flow of the, the, the leak can give us at the moment. I'll go and show you what's, uh, what power we produced overnight. So yeah, we've been running all night and that's uh, the full flow that the leak can give us at the moment. Um, if we have a look, uh, information, I don't know how well you can see this, there we go. So since yesterday, 17.7 kilowatt hours. I don't know what it's classing as yesterday because I don't think I've set the time right. But, uh, oh yeah, yes, oh, today and yesterday. So we had 6.4 yesterday, 17 today. But I don't know when that changed over. But yeah, all going well. So I'm going to shut it down now because I've got a bit more work to do. So I'm going to uh, shut this down now because uh, I'm going to add in another control system to it. So at the moment, the um, dump load controller deals with... Um, over speeding electrically but if a belt fails on the drive or if the alternator fails or something else fails the wheel can still over speed um, and so I'm actually putting a, um, a speed sensor on the wheel and uh, gonna have a sensor which actually tracks the speed of it and once the speed goes past a set point um, I'll show you what so yeah once the speed gets past a set point it's gonna trigger a relay which is going to drive an actuator, which is going to sit here, which is going to pull out. It'll be a bit better done than this, but it's going to pull out this pin. And as that pin pulls out, it's going to instantly just shut this flap off and just completely kill the water to the wheel. So it's a fail safe mechanism that's uh, controlled by the speed of the wheel. And so that covers all eventualities of failures. So that means we're going to, I don't want to be working in the water while we run this cable. It's only gonna be a 24 volt system, so it's not dangerous, it can be near the water. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna shut it off and uh, run another cable. All right, uh, let's have that board out then, John. Have one of them out. Oh, dear me. All right, ready? There we go. So that's out of there. So we uh, got that cable run ready for the uh, fail safe shut off controller. Runs along there, look. Yeah, I thought I'd just show this uh, running at quite low flow because uh, you've seen it at max, which a lot of people want to see it at max. They're only interested in the peak output. But uh, hydro is not all about that. Hydro is about slow, steady, reliable consistency. 
and for it to work a range of flows. And so uh, obviously when we're at low flow, we don't get any splashing and we're much more efficient. And so I thought I'd show you how much power it does uh, in a sort of summer flow. Uh, so it's just building a bit of flow up now and then we'll see how much power we get. As you can see, it's uh, obviously a much more efficient flow rate, you know, for it. The buckets aren't that full, but there's no splashing and uh, it'll still be making quite a bit of power. Let's go and see. Let's go and see how much power it is making. So yeah, this is the flow rate, look. It's, uh, it's really not much flow at all. Isn't that a fantastic sound? So you see, yeah, I'd say that's basically a summer flow rate. You see, we've got no splashing at all. Well, I mean, droplets, literally droplets. So that wheel there is working at probably over 90% efficient. And obviously the, uh, the efficiency just drops off a bit then. Excuse my uh, rough looking face. I haven't had a shave, I've got dry lips. But yeah, as the flow rate goes up, the efficiency goes down, which is to be expected. And it'll work best in the middle of that range. And so it'll work in summer and winter. So yeah, let's go and see how much that's producing. It'll be interesting. Yeah, that uh, tiny little flow rate, 500 watts. And you know, it's very efficient. It just uh, gets less efficient as you get up towards its, uh, its peak design output. But it's, uh, it's happiest at around a kilowatt. It will run happy fine at 1600 watts. It just uh, uses a lot more water. But it just shows it will just it'll work really efficiently down to uh, low flow rates. So that's good. I'll tell you what I do. I might uh, imitate a uh, failure and, uh, and just go and check the speed and the heat of the heater and stuff. So let's do that now then. Let's imitate grid failure. Here it comes. Grid has failed. Let's go and look at the wheel. So the wheel's still spinning, but it's not out of control. It's spinning at the same speed as it was before. Okay. So now this uh, heating element here has got control of the wheel, so the wheel doesn't spin too quickly. And this should be getting hot. There you go. It will keep climbing as it gets hotter and hotter, because that's loading the wheel down now. And that's keeping it under control. And that'll happen all night like that now if uh, someone's asleep and there's a power cut or whatever. And then you wake up in the morning, the, uh, it's not producing any uh, electricity. So then the process is this. So now grid failure, alarm. So even if we put the grid back on now, grid is back on, but we remain off here. Oh, excuse my knuckle, I cut myself. We were made off here. So what we have to go and do is we have to go and slow the water down and bring it back in slowly. So we'll do that now. So after it's gone into that state, you come out, you reduce the flow rate so that the wheel doesn't get uh, too chaotic. So reduce the flow rate a bit, just so it's got a little bit of flow. Now the controller has decided the grid is back on but we're still putting the energy into the heater. And I can smell that actually, because it smells hot. And then to reinstate it, we push this, it latches, and the green light indicates we're functioning. And now the charge controller will get it and slowly load it down. As you see, it's slowly loading it, 180 watts. Yeah, so we're going to let a bit more water in and then we're, it will uh, be back to where it was before we tripped it out. So then you come back out and then once you come back out you give it a bit let the rest of the water through and now it's safe and back in action reinstated so now it is back reinstated and we're up to uh, 660 watts 650 660 so yeah that works really well and that's at a low flow rate at the moment so that there is a 700 watt flow rate and as you can see, we're just starting to see a little bit of splashing, but it's so minimal. But 
I would say that's probably its, uh, its peak flow rate in terms of efficiency. Because basically everything is going in the buckets and we're having 700 watts. So yeah, that is, it really is working fantastic now. It's, it, it, it's great. I don't think I'd change anything. I would have just used a better motor to start with. Yeah, it is working great. I'm really happy with it. I'm to the point now with it where I'm happy with it and I'm proud of it. Um, I just want to get this overspeed controller done as well. But uh, it'll be fine without it, but I think long term I'm going to get that done on the next visit. Yeah, really pleased. Something to behold. It's awesome. First time ever making one, and I reckon that's a big success. So there we go. That is going to conclude this video. Uh, we're not 100% done. We've still got that controller to do, but it's now working as I quoted the customer it will do. I mean, that's running now at 800 watts, and look at it, it's lovely. It can do twice that at peak, um, but it starts to get a bit wasteful. That's fine, that's how hydro works. Um, but yeah, I'm really pleased, happy with that. So yeah, we'll be back in a few weeks time to fit this other controller. All right, hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.